Stand Up for the North is an all-volunteer committee. We have no paid staff. Its members over the years have included forestry workers from all the forestry unions, environmentalists, First Nations people, educators, community activists, and small business people. And since 2006, our committee has organized quite a number of events. And I'm happy to say that members of PPWC and CCU have been involved right from the very beginning, right from the very day that we uh, formed the committee. And I'm speaking, of course, like with uh, Frank, Arnie, Chuck, Stuart, and to name just a few, and I recognize that there's others in the audience uh, who come to meetings or been involved in some way, like uh, uh, Gary and Julie and, and, and many others of you. I know Frank, for example, was involved uh, in this early period, not just with the public events, you know, coming to public events, but uh, a lot of the organizing meetings uh, we had, and uh, he contributed a lot that way. In fact, PPWC and CCU participation and support has been a key part of our growth as a committee. This support is a tribute to you and your leadership's deep commitment to social development, social justice, and the communities of this province and country. Our first big event back in 2006 was to organize a successful two-day conference on what communities in this region could do in the wake of the pine beetle devastation of our forests. At that time, there was a vacuum in the region where everyone was just starting to come to grips with how bad this devastation would be. At the conference, which had a, a positive turn to it, there were many innovative ideas and solutions put forward, some of which were later adopted or further developed by other forces and agencies. Arnie was one of the speakers, and there were many others from First Nations, community and industry, as well as professional foresters, environmentalists, and scientists. This meeting was followed by other public meetings in Prince George, Mackenzie, and Fort St. James on forestry issues, especially on getting more value out of our wood. As you know, in 2007, 2008, the forest industry in this region was hit with an unprecedented downturn caused in part by the collapse of the housing market in the US. This hit the smaller communities in the region extremely hard, such as Mackenzie, which had all its mills shut down, and Fort St. James, all of these things you, you know very well about. These communities were really suffering, and it was at that time that our committee spearheaded the organizing of a Save Our Community rally in Mackenzie, to which over 1,200 people attended out of a population of just 5,000. Buses full of people came from Prince George, Fort St. James, McBride and other communities to support Mackenzie. Representatives from provincial and national unions spoke, including PPWC and CCU, as did prominent political and community leaders. This rally was so large that it attracted provincial and even national attention and it provided the impetus for various levels of government and other forces to get into action to support the community of Mackenzie, a community which has contributed huge revenues to government and industry over the years through all the stumpage, profits, and taxes, but was now in need of substantial support. Our volunteer committee organized a similar Save Our Community rally in Fort St. James a few weeks later, which was also very successful. Since then, we've also organized meetings on the need to keep water and other infrastructure publicly owned and other community issues. A couple of years ago, we brought in the economist, Robin Allen, to speak on the economics of the Enbridge pipeline, as well as the need to process our bitumen and oil resources within Canada rather than sh ripping out and shipping out 
the raw resource on the end bridge and other pipelines. Over 300 people attended that event, which got a lot of coverage. As you know, last year, the provincial government tried to float tenure reform, which would have, in effect, consolidated much of our precious forest resource into the hands of a few big companies in the form of vast tree farm licenses. It was Arnie Burkhoff who proposed to our Stand Up for the North Committee that we organize community meetings to discuss this controversial issue. So, working with Arnie, Frank, Chuck, Stewart, and others from PPWC, as well as steel workers, BCGEU, Unifor, QP, Faculty Association of CNC, and other unions and groups, we organized successful community meetings in Prince George and Mackenzie and partnered with other organizations in Williams Lake for a meeting there. And we did this under the heading of renewing our woods and keeping our forests public and sustainable. These meetings, as is the way we like to do things, involved a very wide range of people from the forest industry, First Nations and community, and had a definite impact. They had such an impact that uh, we were kind of laughing afterwards that even the CEO of Canfor published an open letter basically repeating and agreeing with a number of the criticisms of the TFL proposal that we ourselves have raised in our extensive advertising and in our meetings. Of course, as you know, several months later, the, pro the provincial government withdrew the TFL legislation, which in our opinion was a victory for the people, the First Nations and communities of BC. More recently, just the other night in Prince George, we organized a very successful meeting with an overflow crowd at CNC to discuss the Harper government's anti-terror legislation. <laughs> this legislation, with its broad, vague categories and anti-democratic character, directly threatens labor unions in this country, as well as environmentalists, First Nations, and anyone who disagrees with the federal government. Over the next few weeks, we're planning more meetings on this topic in other towns in this region. In the near future, working with Arnie, Frank, Stuart, and Chuck, and others, we're looking to organize community meetings to discuss what can be done about the mill closures that loom over our communities in this region and other parts of the province, as well as how to move our forests and forest industries forward. And we're looking forward to that work, and we're looking forward to working with uh, uh, PPWC and CCU on that. So just to put in a nutshell, what is the essence of what our committee is about? I mentioned before the issue of empowerment, of people having more of a say and more control over their future, and the need for new mechanisms and new ways of doing this. But connected to this, is our strong belief that there are alternatives to the problems we face in this increasingly globalized and volatile world. The Harper Conservatives and their big business backers say there is no alternative to their policies, to their neoliberal, neoconservative path of austerity, privatization, mill closures, outsourcing of manufacturing, and so on. But this is not true. Back in the 19th century, during the Industrial Revolution, workers worked in appalling conditions of long hours, poor wages, and severe exploitation. At that time, they were also told there was no alternative. Brothers and sisters, through hard struggle, they proved otherwise. Another way was possible. They formed unions and political organizations that advanced the cause of workers and moved the society ahead in the conditions of those times. In the 20th century, workers were told there were no alternatives to the host of problems that confronted them in the workplace 
and in society. But another way was possible. After much struggle by workers and workers' organizations and their allies, reforms like unemployment insurance, public pensions, and Medicare came into being, and the modern state was built. Today, in the 21st century, we live in times where governments and the global big business elite are trying to roll back these and other advances. And once again, they're saying there is no alternative. Brothers and sisters, we say other ways are possible. More than that, they're a necessity. When the Harmac mill was about to be dismantled, cut up into pieces and shipped off to Asia, PPWC members took the initiative and showed another way was possible. There's an inquest going on right now concerning the terrible explosion at the Lakeland Mill in Prince George that killed two of our brothers and injured many more. One of the things coming out of this inquest loud and clear is that another way was possible. It didn't have to happen. Now the same holds true for exports of our raw materials, such as bitumen and oil and gas. We can and should be processing these right here in Canada. And we can and should be getting more revenue from the big oil companies. A few decades ago, oil began to be drilled and pumped out of the North Sea in Europe. The little country of Norway on the North Sea, which is not much bigger than BC in terms of population, was told there was no alternative but to accept what the big oil companies were demanding. But little Norway said no, there was another way. It established its own publicly owned oil company and demand a production share. Furthermore, it demanded substantial royalties, which it then put into a sovereign wealth fund. Today, brothers and sisters, little Norway has the largest sovereign wealth fund in the world, almost $1 trillion, which it can now use for all sorts of social and economic development projects and other uses. In the meantime, Canada doesn't even have a publicly owned oil company, and it has next to nothing in terms of a sovereign wealth fund. The reason is that our political leaders, our political leaders accepted the line that there was no alternative. The same thing holds true for raw log exports. For too long, we've heard from government and industry that there's no other way but to export these logs. The fact is we can and should develop more processing and manufacturing of our wood right here in our province. We need to be opening new mills and getting more value out of the wood, not closing them. And I'm glad to hear that PPWC is looking into ways to do that, to do that on our coast. As you well know, wood is a complex organic compound like petroleum, it is capable of producing literally thousands of different products from a wide range of building materials to chemicals, pharmaceuticals, fabrics, fuels, and plastics. Even better than petroleum though, it is a renewable resource. So the alternatives are right here before our eyes. The same holds true for our dysfunctional political system, whereby we can have a prime minister in his office acting like a virtual dictator and hurling our country backwards through all sorts of anti-social and anti-national measures. Another way is possible there as well. We can and must renew our electoral and political process to give more power to voters and to our communities at the local level rather than political power concentrated in far away corporate boardrooms and government offices. Instead of selling out our country to global financiers and companies, we need real nation building 
and province building. Brothers and sisters, the Harper government stands as a major obstacle to develop alternatives that work for Canada and our people. According to Harper, there is no other way but his way. But again, that is not true. We can, we must defeat the Harper government in the next federal election, and we need to find the ways and means to do this. Brothers and sisters, we live in times when new alternatives to the global agenda of big business and reactionary governments needs to be discussed, deliberated on, and developed. Alternatives that work for the people of our country and are consistent with the new period that we find ourselves in. We live in times when the fight for our democratic rights as workers and people needs to be fought all over again. But it doesn't mean simply going back to what we had before. It means expanding and building upon these rights so that we have more power and control over our futures. Since their founding many years ago, in PPWC's case, 53 years ago, both PPWC and CCU have always sought alternatives to the status quo, led the way in establishing Canadian unions, led the way in calling for equal pay for work of equal value. And that is what our Stand Up for the North Committee is committed to do also. That is what our committee is about. Working together and with others, we can accomplish a lot. So let's organize to create new and better alternatives for our country and our people. And if you're interested in participating and helping out, you know, please talk to me afterwards. I'd be very happy to sign you up. In the meantime, thank you very much, and I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. <laughs>